I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. This video is one in a series I did with my friend Ryan Harrell there, sitting next to me, in which we discuss every single one of the BL Heli 32 options, what they are, what they do, and most importantly, when you might want to change them. In this one, we're going to talk about DMAG compensation. And if you that's what you want to learn about, then watch this video and go on about your day. But if you want to learn about every single thing you could change in BL Heli 32 to make your quad fly better or fix problems, there is a playlist link down in the video description and you can watch the whole thing. It's about an hour of content. Yes, we sat down and talked about BL Heli 32 for an hour and we liked it. We're weird that way. And so are you, I think. Let's do uh, DMAG compensation sure. next. What is DMAG compensation? So DMAG compensation has to do with um, how it handles uh, – we, we talked a little bit about the zero crossing, so how it handles missed zero crossings. So DMAG compensation will try to detect when it misses the zero, com the zero crossing and it basically um, will adjust things like timing and, and some other things like control uh, how – um, the the duty cycle that it, that it's allowing the the um, the FETs to be driven at and reducing that duty cycles to kind of back off the power a little bit um, to prevent it from going into a desync situation. So it's detecting it's detecting those missed zero crossings and it's trying to compensate for them. Yeah, the, the zero crossing to go back to the merry-go-round analogy. If you think about that merry-go-round, you grab the bar, you're pulling the bar, mm -hmm. and then as it crosses your body, you're pushing the bar. Right. And you need to switch from pulling to pushing. If you were to stick your arm out and push, it would it would break your arm, and that's a right. desync. So, in in terms of brushless motors, um, basically a brushless motor only pushes, and as soon as it hits that zero crossing, it has to let go. Right. So, if it misses the zero crossing and it doesn't let go, then it's gonna that causes real problems because then it's pulling. No, it's in the pulling the motor, and right. Yeah. So, and well, we'll talk more about that in okay. a little bit. But So it needs to detect the zero crossing because it needs to keep the timing of the pulling and the pushing mm -hmm, all correct mm -hmm. so the motor doesn't break mama's arm as she's trying to right. swing that merry-go-round. When the zero crossing is missed, DMAG compensation, basically the motor kind of – I like to think of it like it goes into a very conservative state as it drives the motor. Mm -hmm, right. It reduces the power, mm -hmm. but it reduces the odds of a desync. Right. So by setting this to off – it's we've, not doing anything. We basically, not even detecting. if we get a missed zero crossing, we're going to get a desync. The quad's going to fall out of the air. It's no good. Um, I mean, you can survive several missed zero crossings. It has to be an extended period of, of it freaking out before it's a problem. Okay. Um, so, like, I, I I don't remember exactly. I talked to the devs at one point about this, but it, there's a certain threshold. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what you're changing when you right. change from low to high is, like, how, to what degree is it is it freaking out when, like, saying, okay, we need to back power so, right down. So with low and high, with, with low and high, basically what you get, I think – do you get a in general a reduction in power across the board even when no, no. nothing bad is happening? If nothing bad is happening, it shouldn't make any difference at all. Okay, it's only changing the degree to which it reacts. So when then, it why senses don't we? Why don't we just run high and give ourselves the maximum protection against desyncs? I honestly haven't been able to tell a major difference between low and high. And again, okay. some you have to remember some of these settings in BL Heli are designed for different applications than what we're using. Right. Um, on bigger motors, it's going to matter a whole lot more. I remember hearing from people who, as we were getting into 6S before 6S was more popular that if you're running 6S especially higher KV motors you want to run high DMAG yeah, compensation yep. mm -hmm. and I guess the thought there is that you're more likely to because of electrical noise in the system mm -hmm. or whatever to miss the zero crossings and you want to make sure that you're compensating and for that I don't I Also don't know. if if you're talking about BL Heli um, S early days before modern times um, We'll we'll talk about this when we get to another setting, but there were some there were some additional reasons because DMAG compensation used to include ramp up power in it. Oh, so that so was only one ramp setting. Up power ramp up well. power uh, or startup power back in the day, or, or not back in the day, and BLHL S startup power in BLHL 32 ramp up power, same thing, just renamed it. Mm -hmm. um, but early days of BLHL S and back in BLHL um, regular BLHL, uh, the DMAG compensation and ramp up power were part of the same. Okay. Parameter. Okay. So going to high would also change ramp up power. So DMAG compensation, basically everybody flying a typical mini quad should leave it at low. But if you feel like setting it on high, you probably won't notice any difference. Right. In theory, high gives you better protection against desyncs. Mm. And mostly you're going to deal with high if you're using diff atypical motors. Right. Um, and again, for, for low KV, big, like yeah. UAV class motors, you and maybe for X class, I haven't done much testing with X class, mm, but yeah. um, I would imagine that might be useful there. Okay. 
And that is going to bring us to the end of this video. But of course, there's a whole lot of other BLH32 options and Ryan and I will be covering every single one of them. Look down in the video description. There's a link to a playlist. And if some of those videos are private, it just means they haven't come out yet. There's like an hour of content here. So come back to the channel and eventually all of them will be released. And then you can uh, learn everything you want to know about BLH32. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy flying.